The stereotypical French person has a beret, a striped shirt, a baguette under an arm. Well, that's a total cliche, Jeannie, but it's true that bread is an integral part of the French diet, and people take their bread very seriously. French people will go very far to find the perfect baguette, but just what makes French bread so good? Join us for this episode of French Connections Plus, where we take a bite out of the delicious heaven that is the French baguette. <laughs> Just like wine or cheese, the baguette is an unofficial symbol of France. It's said that the French eat 30 million baguettes a day. That's 320 baguettes a second. The baguette has its place at every meal. Jam and butter tartines for breakfast, baguette sandwiches for lunch, with cheese after dinner. There's actually an expression in French, long comme un jour sans pain, long like a day without bread. And like all national treasures, the baguette is protected by law. In 1993, the government passed something called the Décret Pain, the Bread Decree, which lays out certain ground rules for what's known here as a traditional baguette. Now this is a traditional baguette, and this is a regular baguette, and a traditional baguette goes for a little bit more than a euro, a regular baguette a little bit less than a euro, but a traditional baguette is a little bit more delicious. And to be called a traditional baguette, it has to be made on site using four ingredients, wheat flour, water, yeast, and salt. It can't be frozen at any time and can't have any additives or preservatives. The idea is to protect artisanal bakers from supermarkets and industrial bread. So the baguette is a cherished institution here in France, but just where did this iconic bread begin and what's behind its incredible shape? Surprising as it may be, the exact origin of the baguette is unknown, and there are several competing theories. One popular story is that baguettes were created during the Napoleonic Wars. At the time, bread was round because it kept better. That made it bulky and not practical for soldiers to carry, hence the new baguette shape, easier to pop in a bag on the go. Another theory is that the baguette was invented in Vienna and imported to France during the 19th century. Others argue that it was developed in Paris during the 1920s. Yeah. At the time, a law forbade bakers from working mm. before 4 a.m., so they had to invent a kind of bread that was quicker to bake than traditional round bread. And then there are those who link the origin of the baguette to the creation of the Paris Metro. Workers digging the galleries carried knives to cut the bulky bread they brought for lunch. But knife fights would break out, so the engineers asked bakers to invent a long bread that didn't require a knife to be eaten. Originally, the baguette was a Parisian bread and had a hard time being accepted in the countryside where people preferred darker, thicker, and rounder bread that sticks to your bones and lasts longer. But these days, the baguette is a national treasure. Despite their reputation, the quality of baguettes varies, and choosing the right one is an art form. Well, first of all, there's the visual aspect. A good baguette should neither be undercooked nor overcooked. If it looks golden and crispy on the outside, you're probably on the right track. So that's for the appearance, but the texture of the baguette is also very complex. That's right, because it has to be dense and crunchy on the outside, soft and fluffy on the inside, but not chewy. Now, a good way to know uh, if you've got the balance right is actually to squeeze the baguette, because a good baguette genie actually tells a story. In fact, bakers say that a delicious baguette sings. Just take a listen. I hear it. <laughs> Okay, and what about the baguette etiquette, or bag etiquette, if you like? Do you tear it? Do you slice it? Well, purists, like my grandparents, would say that you never cut bread, you break it. Although, in practice, people do use a bread knife to slice bread. And I love the bread vocabulary in France. The inside of the bread is known as la mi. As for that pointy hard bit on the end, that's the crouton, le crouton. And le crouton really is the prized part of the baguette because after all, there are only two of them, so people tend to fight over them. It's also the part that you'll see people eating on the way home from the bakery when the bread is still warm. Which is also one of the rare times you'll see French people eating in the streets. Now, lots of countries, of course, have fantastic bread, but Flo, you went to find out just what makes French bread that much better. To unlock the secret of what makes French bread delicious, I want to meet Yoshimi Londemen, co-founder of the popular Londemen bakery line with shops in Paris, Lille, and even Tokyo. Hi Yoshimi, thanks so much for having us today. You're going to teach us how to make a traditional French baguette. What are the steps? Il y a trois étapes. D'abord, on va pétrir la pâte, ensuite on va diviser la pâte, 
à la fin, on va façonner une baguette. Parfait. Well, let's get going. Let's go. <rire> Donc, 350 grammes d'eau. Oui. Après, la levure. OK. Maintenant, du sel. Il faut bien, bien mélanger. Bien mélanger. Voilà. On met le mana et on mélange. Après, petit à petit, la farine devient une pâte. Oh, c'est bon, c'est bon. <rire> Maintenant, il faut couper un peu, taper la pâte. Pourquoi est-ce qu'on frappe Quand on frappe, la pâte, ça donne, ça donne la force. La pâte qui ferme, en fait. Pâte, frappe. Voilà. Ah. Maintenant, la pâte, elle devient, devient homogène. Maintenant, on va laisser reposer 15 minutes. Après 15 minutes de repos, la pâte est devenue légèrement. Vous voyez, c'est pas la même consistance qu'avant. Hein. Ça se casse pas. Ça se casse pas. Ça se déchire. Ah oui. <rire> Je vais frapper encore une fois. C'est bon Voilà. Ah. OK. So, 24 hours later, what we just did gives us this mix. On va bloquer à peu près aussi durée pour que la pâte se développe gentiment. Et aussi, euh, la pâte est bien aérée. C'est très joli, hein? Moi, je suis amoureuse. <rire> so, we divided it up into little balls and now we're going to make it into the baguette shape. And yeah. this is called le façonnage. Façonnage. C'est quoi le secret ici? C'est très technique. Je mets toujours trois lignes comme ça. On pond la pâte avec quatre doigts, comme ça. Et maintenant, on ferme avec euh, la main droite, en glissant vers la gauche. On fait des serpents. <rire> Il ne faut jamais euh, tirer la pâte. OK. Alors maintenant, c'est ton tour. <rire> okay. Mais ça a l'air tellement facile quand c'est vous qui le faites, mais OK. It's not as easy as it looks. On fait comme ça. OK. Voilà. Il faut rouler. Donc une heure plus tard, la, notre baguette, ils sont pleins à cuire. OK, donc on les met au four. Exactement. Cool. Avant de le mettre au four, il faut donner, oui, donner un, un lame. Une lame oui, C'est la signature de... Chaque pain, il y a différentes queues de lame. En fait, ça donne identité, aussi la beauté. Et plus important, la pâte dans le four, il va se développer. S'il n'y a pas de lame, ça va craquer n'importe comment. How do you know if it's the perfect baguette? Alors déjà première chose, la pâte elle est bien brillante. Et deuxième chose, la pâte il y a plein de trous équivalents. Et troisième chose, la côte au compte est bonne épaisseur. So now we can taste it. Yes. This is course. the best part. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. That's a very good baguette. Mmm, c'est super bon. Thank you so much, Yoshimi, for teaching Thank us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. The baguette may be king, but French bread isn't just about baguettes. Just walk into any bakery and you'll see the variety. Well, there's bread made from white flour. There's bread made from whole wheat flour, known as pain de campagne. There's rye bread, pain de seigle. All this in all shapes and sizes. One reason there's so much variety is to match changing tastes and eating habits in France, because the truth is people are eating a lot less bread than before. Well, during the 18th century, bread represented 90% of the French diet. And at the beginning of the last century, people ate on average one kilo of bread a day, which is the equivalent of this. Now, these days, people tend to eat about 120 grams a day, which is the equivalent of that. Which is still a lot. People are becoming aware that too much bread, i.e. carbs, in your diet just isn't that good for you. Plus, there's the growing gluten-free trend. But bread is not demonized as it can be in the US or the UK. These days, it's all about quality over quantity. Euh, ouais, je, bon, on est deux, bon, on dirait qu'on achète une baguette par jour à peu près. Ouais, voilà. Je ne suis pas une grosse consommatrice de pain. À chaque repas. Mais ceci dit, je consomme euh, deux tranches de pain euh, tous les matins. Moi j'avoue que j'en mange que le week-end. Pareil, c'est rare, c'est vraiment pour se faire plaisir, pour le goûter ou pour un brunch. Non, boulangerie. 
n'y a pas photo. Jamais sur le supermarché, toujours en boulangerie. Et toujours les mêmes boulangeries. Euh, ça arrive, mais vraiment pour dépanner. Euh, vraiment, c'est quand euh, en cas de force majeure. Je peux traverser un arrondissement. Non, je ne suis pas prêt à faire des kilomètres. Je suis prête à faire de, un peu de distance pour aller chercher mon pain là où il est bien. Le bon pain, parce que sinon, autant pas en acheter. Je préfère me passer de pain que de manger du mauvais pain. Il faut qu'elle soit croustillante, il faut qu'elle soit bien fraîche, un peu tiède, c'est encore meilleur. Il faut qu'elle soit bien cuite et bien croustillante. Euh, dorée, assez croustillante, avec une bonne mie à l'intérieur. Pas trop cuite, pas trop cuite aussi. Avec un peu de beurre qui fond dessus et du fromage, on ne peut pas mieux. Ben, en premier, il n'y a pas de souci, c'est premier, première place. On est réputé pour ça dans le monde entier, pour notre part. C'est un peu cliché, hein, le, le béret et la baguette. Oh, en numéro un. Ben, en premier, bien sûr. Je ne crois pas qu'il y ait d'autres pays dans lesquels on ait une telle... Euh, euh, un tel choix de, de, de pain. Pour avoir vécu un peu à l'étranger aussi, quand il n'y a pas de pain, de vrai pain, c'est vrai que bah, ça, ça manque. Many of you sent in your questions about French bread, particularly about how long it can keep. And Snea Rahila wanted to know, what do you do with the leftovers? Well, the only problem with baguettes is that they get stale after about just a day. So if you want to keep a baguette fresh, you can always put it in a cloth bag. If you put it in a plastic bag, it'll get chewy. But there's always the option to freeze a baguette. Now, if it ever gets hard, you can also make that infamous French toast, which is known here in France as lost bread, pain perdu. Now, interestingly, French people don't really eat French toast the way they do elsewhere in the world. Probably because they ate all the bread the night before. All right, next tweet, Self-Regulation Central wanted to know, what's the best baguette in France and how is it decided? Well, there's several competitions across the nation, but the most prestigious one is the one here in Paris. And the jury, which is composed of bread professionals and journalists and even a couple of hand-picked internet users, will they decide what is the most delicious baguette here in Paris? And the winner gets to deliver freshly baked baguettes for a year to the president at the Elysee Presidential Palace. Sounds delicious. Now, unfortunately, that's all the time we have today, but Please keep tweeting me your questions at Flo Vilmino, or you can reach out on Facebook. And we'll see you next time for another French Connections Plus. I don't know about you, Jeannie, but I am off to eat the crouton. There's two of them. <laughs>